is up guys this is Nate again with Mudzigger off-road we're gonna do a quick tutorial video here on the oil change spark plugs and oil filter on the 2009 to 2023 Yamaha 1.8 liter high output naturally aspirated engines first thing you're gonna do there is remove the two engine cover screws that's gonna be a Phillips head go ahead and pull the seat off and the rear storage container as well that's gonna give you room there in the engine compartment to go ahead and slide the engine cover to the rear this does not need to come all the way out just sliding it to the rear under that third seat will give you all the room you need pull that dipstick out make some room there we always like to have a nice clean workspace keep everything organized and keep aware of where all the tools that we're using are so this pump right here is what we use and recommend using for the removal of the oil i've got a link for this down in the description below this is a vacuum extractor. So once you go ahead and start to pull a vacuum on the oil through that dipstick tube, it's gonna constantly drain there on its own. So there's not any pneumatic hookup, there's not any constant pumping or anything crazy like that. Once you pull that vacuum, it's gonna go ahead and drain all on its own. So you can go ahead and knock out the oil filter, spark plugs, and anything else you need to while it's draining. It will take about five-ish or so minutes to do a full drain, and you're gonna be looking for about three to three and a half quarts of oil if it was fairly full once you started. Let's get this guy opened up here. Try not to cut the hose or my thumb. We're gonna feed that down into the oil pan through that dipstick tube and you're gonna to wanna to go all the way down until you feel a hard stop. And then go ahead and pull it about an eighth inch up off the bottom. We have had it in the past where it does pull vacuum on the oil pan down below. Another thing you could always do is cut the end of that hose at like a 45 degree. It'll keep it from pulling a suction. You're always gonna get oil once you start pulling vacuum. Go ahead and give it a couple pumps to prime it make sure the oil is starting to come down that tube you can see it there and then you're going to want to continue pumping until you feel kind of a nice steady resistance as you're pulling that handle up Let's go ahead and keep pumping until you feel that resistance like i said And it's not usually necessary, but we like to pull the fill cap off. It's gotta come off anyway to fill it back up, but just in case there's any issues with vacuum inside the crankcase. While that's draining, we're gonna go ahead and grab our oil filter pliers and get that oil filter pulled off so we can replace that. And this one did tend to be a little bit tighter than they usually are. A lot of times we can just get them with our hands, but uh, in this case, I did need to use the oil filter pliers. Try to keep that oil filter upright as you're pulling it out of the engine bay just to try to keep the mess to as small as possible. There is a good chance that you are gonna spill a little bit of oil once you pull that filter off, but uh, it's typically not a big deal. One thing you can do if you do this mid-season is go ahead and spray the inside of the hole down with some degreaser, tilt the ski back and kind of spray that out to make sure you're not getting any oil or anything up into the water. There's a Yamaha oil filter part numbers everything you're gonna need 
we typically recommend just using the Yamaha service kit. It comes with some NGK plugs, Yamaha oil filter, and Yamaha lube as well. So everything is going to be exact spec that this ski is going to call for. There's the specs of the oil. It's a Yamaha lube 10W40. And make sure we lube up that o-ring on the new filter and then when you pull the old filter off always make sure that you get the o-ring off with it if you double stack o-rings it will slowly leak and typically ends up with a uh, a major engine failure if not caught quickly go ahead and get that guy spun on there and then just hand tight on an oil filter, just like you would with a car or anything else with a with a spin-on style oil filter. Just nice and hand tight. Once the engine warms up and the oil gets flowing, it's actually gonna cause that O-ring to swell, creating a better seal. That is why they're always a little bit tighter pulling off than they are when you put them on. And this is just double checking to make sure we've got that old O-ring there. Just making sure we don't double stack them before we get that tightened up. And since, like I said, we are going to be doing spark plugs with this as well, we're going to go ahead and pull the ignition coils out of the cylinder heads just so we can go ahead and start loosening up those spark plugs and getting them pulled out. If you notice the ignition coils on this ski are already loosened. We pull them off at the end of the season and put them on top of the bolts just so we know that the ski does need an oil change in a service before it goes out for the next season. That way nobody accidentally fires it up, tries taking it out onto the water when it is not ready to go. And if you have a spark plug socket here, now is a good time. The 3H drive sockets typically fit the best in the valve cover. Um, we don't typically use spark plug sockets, just use a standard socket and then we just use a magnet to go ahead and pull that spark plug out of the cylinder. Start loosening them up. You might have to get creative with that second cylinder from the front just because it's got that cross member in the way. If you pull the top deck off, obviously you're not going to have this issue, but for the 15 to 20 minutes it takes to do an oil change, it is not worth pulling that deck off in my opinion. And just look at that hose, make sure it's still draining there. You'll notice when it starts coming to an end because there will be a lot of bubbles and very little, little fluid. That's when you typically want to make your last adjustment. Push that hose just a little bit farther down in there. Just make sure that you can get as much of that oil out as possible. Go ahead and 
get those pulled out there. Like I said, if you don't have a spark plug socket, just any slim magnet will do just fine. making sure the part numbers match up on the new spark plugs. It's not unheard of to get a wrong set of spark plugs when you order this kit. Um, just kind of with any parts, um, mistakes happen. Filling, shipping orders happen, so just make sure you've got the correct spark plugs before you go ahead and toss those plugs out or throw them in the trash. We got helper number two, keep me on my toes. And right now we've got the impact set on the absolute lowest setting. So I wanna say it doesn't torque too much at all. We just kind of snug them down with that, threading in properly. And then uh, as always, go ahead and use a, a ratchet to go ahead and make sure they're as tight as they need to be. Don't need to kill them, but we do need to make sure that they're snug. And the uh, impression ring on the spark plug is cinched down so we have a good seal. Always hit the outside three and then build up and get a little creative with the combination for the one under that cross member there. It's typically a deep socket with a three inch extension and just the ratchet. It is a very close fitment to the valve cover, but it does work just fine. And once you got all the spark plugs in there, you can go ahead and start tightening down the ignition coils for the spark plugs. So we gotta pull the bolts out that are just finger threaded in there and then uh, throw the ignition coils in and go ahead and get those bolts tightened back down. And just keep an eye on how much oil you have pulled out of the engine. Make sure you're still flowing steadily. It's not gonna hurt to try pulling a little bit more vacuum on it if it, uh, if it was leaking off just a little bit.
Once you get those screws out, or if there wasn't any screws to start with, go ahead and start pushing those ignition coils down in there. Make sure they are down all of the way. You should feel a nice firm stop. And once you've started putting your ignition coils in, you can start working your way through and snugging up those, I believe there are eight millimeter bolts. And just taking one last look at the vacuum there on the oil tank. We're just starting to get a couple small bubbles. And we are coming up to right about where we need to be on the oil level. And that one ignition coil that we couldn't get to with the impact, go ahead and get those snugged up as well. Once again, just make sure all four are nice and snug. That way we don't have any issues with them backing off during the season. And just about wrapping it up here, the only thing that you've got left is to go ahead and fill this thing up with oil. The engine oil replacement with oil filter is right at about 3.8 quarts. Thanks guys for watching, like and subscribe. Thank you.